Okay, welcome back to another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with is with Matt Wicks. So Matt, to get us started, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, I've been involved in K-12 through online learning for quite some time, going on two decades now. Um, currently, um, I'm with Pearson Online and Blended Learning, um, supporting Connections Academy schools, really focusing on areas of state accountability or just formal accountability systems, how schools are being measured and held accountable and how they can improve their performance. But uh, when I first got involved was with the um, state virtual school in Illinois, the Illinois Virtual High School at the time, now the Illinois Virtual School, have had my own independent consulting um, company in online learning, worked for INACOL for a period of time. So I've really had a broad set of roles and experiences in K-12 online learning. Now, when we first met, Matt, I know you were with the Illinois Virtual High School at the time running that program, and I recall we used to have these three professional development sessions every year, so in planning those, you've right from the get-go, you've had a lot of experience in training teachers on how to use online tools and engage in online pedagogy, and we've got a, a lot of folks now that are being thrown into a remote learning situation, and depending on where they are, some might have been at it now for a couple of weeks, some might be just starting. Um, based on the things you've picked up over the years in, in these various places, what advice would you have for folks that are being thrown into this? Yeah. Well, first of all, I really appreciate your terming of remote learning um, as opposed to online learning because what most teachers and students are experiencing is not the same thing as a well thought out, well planned online learning experience. And I think it's important for people to understand that because they may get the impression, oh, this is what online learning is all about. And unless you're fortunate to have teachers from a school that have done a lot of um, preparation and training, that's probably not what you're getting. But I've always felt that whether we're talking about remote learning or online learning, that the teacher is the key to that successful and high quality experience. You just can't get around that in any way that you're presenting that education. The teacher is going to be the most important part of that experience. So teachers that are just being thrown into it, uh, perhaps without um, any warning or, you know, it wasn't their choice, one thing that you need to look at is what are the age of your students? Obviously, the way you're going to approach an early elementary school student is different than you're going to approach an upper high school student. It's different than um, a college student as well. So, you know, keep that in mind. Take some guidance and direction from your school or school district. I know, you know, working with schools across the state, there's a huge level of difference on what the expectations are. So some it's much closer to enrichment, some it's much more high stakes. So you kind of need to assess what the expectations are. Um, remember that your students are also, you know, not only are you experiencing challenges, this is probably new for your students, even though they may be very familiar with online in general, that doesn't mean they're familiar with having their education delivered in an online or remote manner. Um, but they're also probably going through a lot of stresses and difficulties. We have three kids at home, uh, two that came in from back from college, one that's in high school. Each one of them has different experiences and different temperaments. And so they've had, you know, on a spectrum of how natural and, you know, how they're feeling about that. But it also means, you know, in our situation, the three kids, plus myself working at home, plus my wife who's a brick and mortar school teacher. So there's all of us trying to do this all at the same time, which means your students may not have resources available at any time of the day. They're, they may be sharing computers, um, the networking capacity and their house might be stressed out. So you really need to maintain thoughts of flexibility and understanding. I would really recommend keeping any synchronous learning experiences to a minimum, you know, for the reasons that I just um, was explaining. 
if you are doing a synchronous session, definitely recommend recording it so that those that can't attend at the time will have access to it after the um, well. For yourself as a teacher, think about your schedule. You want to make sure that you're giving yourselves breaks during the day. I know some really stress, oh, having a real structured um, schedule. And if that's who you are as a person, great, if that works for you. But what you really just need to think is what works for you. Are you a morning person? Are you an afternoon person? Give yourself a lot of grace in this situation. This is difficult. It's stressful. Um, final thought in this area is look to the resources, resources that are being put out by organizations that have experience in this area. You know, Pearson has put out resources and tips, has made things available um, to teachers and um, schools, but of course we're not the only organization that has done that. And so if you find an organization that has experience in that, you know, spend some time looking at those resources and tips and figure out what's going to work for you. I'm glad you mentioned the resources, Matt, and we can include links to some of those underneath the video, uh, both on YouTube and in the blog entry, because, um, you know, Pearson are one of the few organizations that have been doing something similar to this, particularly at the elementary levels. There's a lot of online learning at the high school level, but much more so at the elementary level. So those types of resources, I think, will probably be a little bit more difficult to find for folks, so they'll appreciate those. Um, I know that in your work with Connections Academy, because it's a fully online school, that the parents are always much more engaged in the educational enterprise than they would be in a traditional schooling environment. And in this remote learning situation that parents are in now, it's actually much more consistent with what you guys have been doing for I guess, a couple of decades now. So are there things that you can take from that uh, Connections experience that might be useful to parents right now? Yeah, certainly. And before I answer that, when we talk about resources, just one thing that popped into my head and when you provide that is a couple of resources we've done on web webinars is specifically to teachers for special education students as well as parents, which is, again, a really challenging topic. It um, in some cases, the accommodations are very natural, but it, it requires a reframing and a rethinking. So that's a very useful item. But yeah, getting to parents and students, um, start again, take some clues and direction from your school and, you know, of understanding what the expectations are for you. Um, work out a schedule that is going to work with everyone in mind with you as a parent who may also be trying to work um, even though and depending if working from home is new to you as a parent right you're juggling that challenge as well as you know your students and you know children's challenges and again the age of the child is going to matter greatly we like to think that high school kids can be much more independent, and I think that's generally true than your um, second grader. They're going to have a, you know, going to need a lot more guidance from you. Um, but help be supportive of your student, figuring out when is a good time to be working with them. You know, I know I've talked with colleagues where they may get up earlier than normal and get some work done when the house is relatively quiet. Then take a break and work with their children and get them started, um, but maybe still in earshot. Maybe you're all at the kitchen uh, table, depending what's going on. And regarding this, I also encourage you, as the parents, talk with your company and your manager and supervisor and explain what's going on. I know at Pearson, they've been very supportive of understanding of, you know, needs for different schedules and to be flexible. I hope other people are fortunate enough to be working in companies that understand that as well. Um, 
yeah, there's nothing wrong in my view, especially if you can um, get your employer to understand that you're going to take a break in the middle of the day and maybe you're going to work earlier hours or later hours, or you're just going to be more efficient. And, you know, the clock hours in the end shouldn't be the driving force, even though uh, that may be hard for people at first. I'm glad you mentioned the special ed resources at the top. I know we've had both Ray Rose and Mary Rice um, on in these episodes that have focused upon special ed, but uh, most folks uh, are looking at the, the, I guess, the general ed student, and we don't get a lot of advice for those people, so I really appreciate uh, that suggestion there, Matt. Um, so thank you for joining us, Matt. Uh, today we've had another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with Matt Wicks. Thank you very much. Thank uh-huh.